to uh, read Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars because it is a program of manipulation, enslavement, and genocide, and it's without mercy. Right now I'm going to just read a quote from Edward Mendel House and what he had to say in a private meeting with Woodrow uh, Wilson, president between 1913 and 1921 from the private papers of Woodrow Wilson, quote, very soon every American will be required to register their biological property in a national system designed to keep track of the people and that will operate under the ancient system of pledging. By such methodology, we can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our security as chargeback for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer not being able to work and earn a living. They will be our chattel, and we will hold the security interest over them forever by operation of law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. Americans, by unknowingly or unwittingly delivered the bills of lading to us, will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent forever to remain economic slaves through taxation secured by their pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given commercial value designated to keep us a profit that will be none the wiser. For not one man in a million could ever figure out our plans. And if by accident one or two would figure it out, we have in our arsenal plaus plausible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund government, by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and pledges. This will inevitably reap us huge profits beyond our wildest of expectations and leave every American a contributor to this fraud, which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will insure us for any loss we may incur, and in this manner, every American will unknowingly be our servant, however begrudgingly. The people will become helpless without any hope for their redemption, and we will employ the high office of the president as our dummy corporation to foment this plot against America. Having established plausible deniability, even if people become enlightened that they had a remedy and pursued it, the attorneys, judges, and legislators could claim that they did not understand the people's claims, especially if the technical requirements for achieving it were not followed pursuant to statutory requirements. Requiring the public schools to teach civics, government, and history classes out of federally approved, politically correct textbooks written by the publishing houses owned by the owners of the Federal Reserve would assure that the people would not discover the remedy for a long time, if ever. I would recommend that everyone read Fruit from a Poisonous Tree. This is a certified true copy of my live statement of birth. You can get this by applying for it at the Registrar General. They'll give it to you. And it's very interesting because this is where it all began. This is the foundation document. All identification is generated from this document. And so if the foundation document is no good, anything that's made from it is no good. That means driver's licenses, health cards, everything. Now what they did here, this is exactly what he meant when he said, soon every American will be required to register their biological property. Now your parents didn't realize what they were doing when they filled this out, and these didn't exist before 1933. Birth records were recorded in scripture, and these only came into being in 1933 
when they hatched this plan. They created a corporate fiction with a name just like yours. In doing this, they registered and monetized the spirit and soul of a living being. This denotes ownership. And when your parents were tricked into filling this out, they allowed your spirit and your soul to be monetized. And futures were sold on you. Spirit and soul. Now, this is my birth certificate. This is actually a share. See this red number? This A, I'm born in Canada. This is a class A share. Now, this is called a CUSIP number. And all securities require a CUSIP number. And that's what this is. And you are held as collateral to secure the debt which our government owes to international bankers. So you and me and all these people here are actually collateral. And we don't even own our lives. We are chattel. And we believe we're free. I made an application to the Registrar General and I got my original social insurance application. Now before they sent it to me, they put a little piece of paper over this before they photocopied it. Because my friend has his and they didn't block this out. And when you hold it up, you see Bank of Canada. It is said that the best slaves are the ones who don't know that they're enslaved. And we all have invisible chains on us. Millions of people get up and hurry off to work. They put in their eight hours, they pay their taxes, they trade on the market, they hold their business meetings, and they build their homes. They do all this amazing work while they are asleep. Asleep to what is actually going on. Asleep to the fact that their rights of freedom are slowly being taken away. Taken away. As long as they have the freedom to shop, to buy things, to get that big TV screen and that new car or go to a hockey game, they don't seem to be too concerned. In the last seven years since the events of 9-11, it's easy to see that the world has changed. When someone starts to make public announcements about the truth, the media is quick to label them as lunatics, conspiracy theorists, and even a terrorist. It feels to many like we live in a police state. It's time to take a closer look at the big picture. It's time to talk about what is real and what is artificial. It's time to wake up. I discovered the deception of the capitalized name and the Admiralty jurisdiction through my birth certificate. And the reason why my birth certificate was so important is because that's when the theft took place by the bankers. The government uh, decided to uh, enslave us as collateral for the bankers with the birth certificate. As soon as you are born, the birth certificate is altered. What they did with the name was they changed the uppercase, lowercase to capitalize on it. That capitalized version then became the slave. It became the collateral to pay for the interest to the bankers. What the government did was made us believe that that capitalized artificial name is in fact us. When it is not us, it is 
a corporate entity. It's a capitalized version that they need in order to work with. It's it's total deception. It's deception of the highest degree. Highest degree. The theft of the family name begins at birth and is carried throughout your entire life. You are a tax slave from birth until death. If you take a look at the birth certificate, if you take a look at the passport, if you take a look at the citizenship card, if you take a look at the driver's license, you will actually see on there that it says this is not your property. It belongs to the government of Canada. Total deception. What they're doing is basically making you responsible for all of the acts and the statutes from admiralty jurisdiction in that corporate fiction name. You are conforming to the laws and the rules and the regulations that they put out for you, but when in fact these particular laws, rules, and regulations, statutes, and man-made acts are from a ship, they're on the sea. We're living on land. If you say that you are the slave and they, that you allow them to create that joinder between the uppercase, lowercase name and the capitalized version, then what happens is, yeah, you become responsible and you do become the debtor. Wake up, 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 wake up. Some people call it the artificial person, some people call it the debtor, some people call it the fiction, some people call it the straw man, some people call it de facto. Wake up. They've said you're responsible for that corporate entity. If you don't conform to their rules and their regulations, if you speed over the speeding limit, then you did something wrong because you didn't comply to Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction Law. So therefore, you're the slave and you have to pay the tax bill on this particular contract that's issued to the capitalized name. You owe them. It's the debtor. The capitalized name is the debtor. I am the creditor and I'm going to give my capitalized version, the entity that they do commerce with, I'm going to give it credit because I am the creditor. I'm not the debtor. You can define yourself differently as a natural free man or a natural free woman, and you get to say in a contract, offer acceptance, you get to say, I accept or I do not accept. We are creditors. We are life. We are the spirit and the soul walking on this earth, and it's time that we effect a change in a positive way for the future of our children. We have a right to live in our own homes. We have a right to be free and to talk as we want to talk. We have a right to free travel. It is us that the government needs to listen to and they need to stop listening to the bankers and the gangsters and we need to find some peace. We should operate from a higher dimension and that higher dimension is called love. It's called light. Where are you from Irene? I'm from the light.